Hello, it's Sarah, and I'm back for the next step in our little painting project. I've got my little gnome all ready to go. It's been um, <laughs> sealed, so there's a barrier for me to paint on, and we're going to base coat first. So we're just going to lay down some color for... It's just like coloring book right now. We're just going to solidly base coat. And when I base coat, I like to use a flat brush. There's a lot of different ways you can go, but you could use a filbert. A filbert's a little bit of a rounded. Um, you could use whatever you You can use a round brush. I just like using a flat brush, and you'll see why. Um, the first color we're going to use is called light buttermilk. I'm pretty sure I grabbed it. No, I didn't. I have buttermilk, but I don't have light buttermilk on my desk. Hold on. Got it. My paints are so old. Look at that cracked up. So there's just a little in here, but you only need a little bit. And to base coat, I will tend to use like a, even a piece of um, deli paper, anything that you can just throw away. You don't need to use your palette paper for this part because... I, I only like to use that for floating. And that being said, do what you want. It's fine. But I'll just throw this away when I'm done. So I'm just going to put out a little. And when I base coat, I like to load my brush with a little bit of water. So I'm going to go into my water bucket. So I take, this is a number eight, by the way, uh, Joe Sonia Sure Touch Flat. And I kind of go like this in my water. Get it really saturated. Okay, so now it's dripping wet take the drips off. Then I go to a couple of paper towels. I would say there's like two full towels folded up. And then I blot my brush. I just, so there's definitely still water in the bristles. Then when I load my brush, what I end up with is a mixture of water and paint mixed together. So, and I'm, I'm going to blot it a little harder. I'm going to take a little more of the uh, water out of the brush. And I do that so that I don't end up with just a gloppy paint mixture. Of, uh, gloppy paint. All right, hold on. Let me see where I'm going. Base coat the wings with light buttermilk. So the wings, I want to look at the picture too. You always can use the picture as your guide. You also have your um, pattern. So I'm just grabbing, no, this is the different one. The pattern um, is still in the bag. But I'm just going to use this. And because this flower, the flowers are going to go on top of the wings, you see, I don't have to really worry about, um, so I'm just going to see how, okay, I, I'm, I'm not talking right after dinner. My, my words are all flubby. Anyway, so I just start to lay the paint down. And again, I like to, um, this is a part of the wing too, I like to keep overstroking my ridges so that it comes out nice and flat. And I think that's all I need to do. So if you just keep a, a straight line. Now, the other thing is, you see how I did the sides of the piece with the similar color when I did my other gnome? I'm not sure. She doesn't really give you a good look at it. And you could just leave it brown, but see how I'm getting white all over the sides? So, I don't know. If you're careful, you won't do that. Let me grab a Q-tip and see if I can get it off real quick. I just dipped it in the water, and I'm just going to see if I can clean that up. Yeah, maybe I'm going to shoot for not base coating the sides as well and see how that goes but then if, if it does get some paint on it it's okay and by ridges I mean you can kind of see the ridge right here see how I just pulled that little ridge of paint it's not that important but I am just aware of it when I'm base coating see look how fast I'm going I'm not being careful I haven't painted in so long but if you go slower you won't be as messy. So I would just put it down and kind of pull off the edge like that. I like to use the flat, the chisel edge of the brush and see how I can go right up against that line there. 
All right, so that is one coat of base coating. So that's the wings. Let me see what, I know his beard is the same color. So for the beard, it's gonna be all this. So we could probably just paint, um, I'm gonna do it. Cause um, see, I'm quick. I don't like to, I like to get it all done if I can. So I'm gonna just start in the middle and get put my brush down. I need more paint. Light buttermilk, right? That's light ivory. They're very similar. This is whiter. Buttermilk's more yellowy. Um, still have water in my brush. I haven't changed that, so I'm just going into that puddle. You really don't need to have a ton of water because this is pretty slick. But watch how I go right up to the line there. And we're going to cover the nose too. The nose is getting covered, so even if you go over the line, it's not it's not an issue. So we're going to base coat the beard. Remember, these, this little bunch of flowers is going to go here, so you really don't have to go right up to. Like, I'll probably finish my hat. Huh. I think I'm just going to stick to the middle. See how fast I go? And I flipped my brush. Do you see me flip my brush? Because I had paint on the other side. See how there's paint? So I flip it. And this is me, years of painting under my belt, years. So take your time. It's very uh, methodical in a way. It's meditative. I always say that. I'm just going to turn the piece. Always turn the piece if it's easier for you to get at. And I can just run the, the chisel edge of the brush up against that, uh, what is it called? The etching, the line there. If you can't get into the tippy tip of his uh, beard right here, you can use a, a liner brush to get in there. But I just pick the bristles up and use the little edge to get in there. And that's one coat on our beard. It's not opaque yet. And it's a little um, ridgy, you know, but we'll let it dry. Let's see what else we can do with light buttermilk. I should have looked ahead. The beard, I knew. I think that's it. We could probably do the um, bee's wings on the little bee. So let's go to the little bee. It says, uh, paint the body, the wings with light buttermilk. So I'm going to paint this little bee's wings. I'm putting it in the water because I want to sand it again. That's sunshine. I'm just sanding it because it looked like it had something on it. All right. I'm going to take, I'm going to use the same brush and I'm just going to load it. I'm rinsing my brush now. I'm, I'm kind of getting it cleaned off. Blot. And I'm just going to pick up a little bit of paint on the, on like kind of like the tip here. Watch. So I'm going to go in. And just really pick up a little bit because we're just trying to get this little wing I don't know something makes me want to do the edge too I can always do it after it's fine and that's our little bees wings I think that's it for light ivory just from me looking at the picture, I think that's all. Um, so now I'm going to go back. If this is dry, see there, there was a little ridge there. It's pretty dry. I might, we'll, go, we'll do another color real quick. Um, I think I want to do the hat. It says base coat the entire hat with golden straw. And I think I have golden straw. Guys, remember this is paint that I've had forever. I mean this some of this paint could be really old, but I'm pretty sure I had golden straw. I have antique gold. This is just called straw. And it's a different brand, but I think I'm going to use this. Um put a little puddle out. Same brush. So I'm I'm going to do this whole base coating probably with the same exact brush. Water, blot, make a little slicker wetter puddle right next to that puddle and I'm kind of pushing the bristles down into the paint and pulling 
I'm grabbing and pulling and that loads the brush with paint. So now I have paint on both sides and we're going to paint the whole hat this color which you know if you wanted to this is going to be black but she's gonna she wants us to do the whole thing I'm skipping the, the stripe up against his nose is black so really this is all the gold and then the rest is black you know so why would I do the whole rest black I don't know I mean the whole rest gold because that's what it, that's what the directions say Sarah um, his outfit his jumper is golden straw too so that would mean all this area um, yeah so it's really you can only see when you put this up here where it goes you can only see his jumper from here down and when you put the flowers which I think they go like here somewhere like that so I'm gonna do his jumper kinda from where the etching line ends I'll fill that in Take your time and nice thin, two thin coats is what I prefer instead of one thick gloppy coat because I'm going around the beard I'm probably, yeah I'm getting it on the side. So I'll probably end up going back and um, painting the sides to match the whatever color is there and that way it'll look kind of finished oops I got it on the white I'll show you a thing if you do get it on the white which we're gonna do another coat of white so I'll cover it anyway but you always can have a q-tip handy and just uh, I don't even see where I did it oh here I don't know push it push it back now I'm getting it on there but anyway q-tips are your friend have have a have a nice thing of q-tips on the desk and whenever you make a mistake, this is water-based paint. You can just dunk it in your water bucket. I often stick it in my mouth and wipe it off. And start again. So see, we're already halfway done this thing. I'm telling you, it's going to work up so quick. What else can I do? I don't think the B scap, this little thing, I don't think this is done. Let's see, B scap. Uh, it says deep ochre and I think I'm going to use like antique gold I think I'm going to use this it's a little darker um, yeah here's an antique gold too look this is two different brands of antique gold this one is by Delta Ceram Coat this one's Americana um, deco art this one looks more brown and this one look, looks more yellow but they're very close they're not exact Actually, this one looks more yellow. I can't tell. <laughs> They're so close. I'll probably just use antique um, gold. So I'm just rinsing my brush, and we're going to go back into... Oh, you know what? There's a part on here that is his sleeve. This part right here is part of his sleeve. This is his hand, but this part right here, I'm going to do the yellow ochre or whatever it was straw golden straw again I'm gonna come in and see how I've loaded the brush kind of on one side I'm gonna get, get it really nice so I have it see how the bristles are really flat I'm gonna use the chisel and just tap in the color right along those lines You can wiggle up to it or you can go right in with the chisel. I do both. But I'm always over stroking um, to clean up any, what is it called? Ridges. So see that's where that's going to go. That's part of his arm. 
I'm going to rinse my brush and we're going to go back into the light ivory. I always go into water, blot, and then I go into the paint. I have quite a bit of paint. I could do both sides. We have a lot, we have a big area to do. I put the paint down kind of in the middle and then work my way back to the edge. Cleaning up those ridges, pulling the brush off the edge of the wood, trying not to get it everywhere, but I am going to go over the edges, I decided. So there we go. I think two coats is going to do it. I always put the paint down in the middle. You can wiggle up to it. You can use the chisel. So yeah, having this etched is it saves you a step. I was I was being old school when I was like, I don't want the etched. But it's actually it's done the tracing for me. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to do the beard with a nice second coat. Put it down. You're going to see that part, the middle. Put a little fudgy there, a little fluffy. And just come over. See how I turn the piece constantly. It's really awkward when you're working on a bigger piece that you can't really maneuver, like a furniture piece or something like that. Oh, my eye itches. Um, but a little piece like this, it's going to be turning all the time, all until I'm done. And I, and I got it on the yellow, but I know that I'll be able to clean that up. And if, as a beginner painter, you get it on the yellow, whatever doesn't matter hopefully you're going to be able to enjoy the process so don't focus on being perfect just focus on the technique like how you load your brush and then and trying to get the paint to be thinner so it's not gloppy and then the techniques will come the more you do it the actual painting will get there if you just focus on the technique or the what am I trying to say how you load your brush and all that stuff and not on your final you know on being perfect right away you wouldn't expect to pick up a flute and be able to play it you know you just you just can't you have to learn and it looks a little rough I'm not I'm gonna be honest I think I'm moving I haven't painted in so long and it might need another coat. I'm gonna. I'm sorry. I I am too close. I have to come back up. Go back into that straw and finish. I gotta, I might have to put my head closer too, so I can focus a little better. And this is what's so serenity about it. It really, you ha if you're focusing on this, it's very peaceful. And I did that for years and I was able to have serenity in my craft room. As soon as I really go into the zone, my voice changes, everything changes. If I slow down, I think I'm just doing it fast because it's a tutorial. I don't want to take too much time. I like to do real-time tutorials. Um, so I'm not going to fast forward. I'm going to just let you see how I'm doing this. I mean, you get the idea. Probably I could go off camera and do some of the base coating. I like the flesh color. But I don't think it will be that long. I think you'll be able to handle it if I if I film everything.
I might as well break out the, the, she used a color called, um, coral, let me see, cloud, coral cloud for the, um, skin tone. My skin tone, coral, it's too pink. This is called Caucasian Flesh, and you can make your gnome with brown skin or any color skin you want. I'll make them a little peachy, but I could give them a tan or make a black skin gnome, whatever you want to do. Just because she has a specific thing, it's it's okay if we make, make it our own, um, but I'm going to use this, and then my hand is going to be on here. And here, there's two hands. This is the nose. Let me see if this is the sealed side. And then I have to do as little, oh no, that's just the top rim of the hat. So it's just hand, hand, nose. That's all I got to use um, flesh color for. So I'm just going to see what this looks like. It might even be a little too, I mean, it's called Caucasian flesh. Is that how you say it? Caucasian flesh. Um but I don't know, it might look weird. I'm gonna do the nose. Kind of just looks orange, like I'm really not a fan, to be honest. It's too dark, it looks orange to me. I don't like it. I wanna go lighter, um, like really softer. I could probably mix that with um, white and it would come down a little bit. But I think I have so many colors that are like this right here is called Rosetta Pink. I think I like this better. I'm just going to take a butt wipe, baby wipe, and just wipe it off. And because we sealed the wood, the paint was on top of a barrier and before it dries I can get it off. So. That's why if I hadn't sealed the wood, that color would have seeped right into the wood. So there you go. But I'm going to use this. It's quite a lot lighter. Um, and then maybe I'll give him a really rosy shine. See on the pic picture, he has a rosy shine on the bottom. And then he, she just highlights the top. Um, but I think I'm going to go with this. Uh, my brush. Just gonna do the same thing. I dipped it in water. I blot it on my paper towel, which is getting kind of wet over there, and load the brush just like this, pulling it out, putting it on the bristles, flip it over. Now I have a fully loaded brush, and I just gotta do these hands. So I'm gonna start like this, put it down, work my way up to that line. And again, I would, I'm just one that likes to do two, two thin coats rather than one gloppy coat, one thick gloppy coat. So that's, that's the way I do it. And then when you're finished, it just looks a little less, I don't know, because it's, it's okay that it's hand done, but it looks neater to me. It looks smoother, I guess. So that's that. Yes, I like that so much better. I'm glad that I um, changed it. Because I don't have the color she used, which was called Coral Cloud. I don't have that color. Before I glue this on, I would have to probably paint the edges. So I'm going to paint. I'm just going to go ahead and throw some on there and see. Yeah, I like that much better. Um, rinse my brush. I think we're all done with the two coats of the yellow, but I'm going to do one more coat on the wings and the beard just to get it really looking opaque.
looks like there's something stuck to the wood and you know I was looking and I I think I might try to even use um, an iridescent top coat for this to kind of like make them look shiny the wings I don't know if she adds that but I'm definitely gonna add it or glitter or something make them look a little more fancy see that looks so much whiter than the beard because it's three coats so lighter colors do sometimes take more coats it's just the nature of the pigment I guess but I am being so fast I really just don't want the middle to look um, ridgy so what in other words this part right here that I'm doing right now I'm just making sure it's not ridgy you guys you do not have to move like I do and be just move your brush like this. This is crazy. Why am I moving so fast? I can take my time. It is. It's just because I'm on camera. I'm telling you. I, I would I do paint fast, but I wouldn't be painting this fast. I think I'm going to slow down on my next one. Like when I start doing the details, I'll try to slow down. Got a little on the yellow that I will get off with my Q-tip. And that's why I don't like the etching. Because I don't know whether to stop over the etching or before the etching or whatever. And when um, when I trace my pattern on, I don't have a... I can make my own line. I don't know. It just seems a little... I can fix it easier. Anywho, that's going to be it for that. I'm not going to do any more coats. I do need to do one more coat on my nose. And then we're going to go in with black. Uh, the shoes are black. The hat is black. The bee, oh, i got to paint the little bee body. Well, there's two stripes on the bee body that are um, straw. So I'm going to add that. I'm just going to paint the whole body. He's really cute. He's really fat and chubby. I like him. And I think that's all. I could do the stand. No, I think I'm going to do the stand the same color as the bee scap. That's just, she said you can paint it any color you want. All right, so let me get out a little bit of black. I have just black, deco art. Ooh, this is a gloss enamel. I mean, you know what? That'll look pretty, though, for, for his shoes. It'll look pretty because it'll give them um, a shine. Let's see what that looks like just for the shoes. And then I'll see if I have flat black. Yeah, I do. This is called ebony. It's black. But the, the gloss paints I used to use for dot painting because it makes them look kind of pearly and shiny. Um, but yeah, if I paint his shoes this color, they'll look a little more like uh, maybe leathery. Look at that shine. It's just pretty. They're all water-based. They just have a little more shine to them. Oh, look, it's not as opaque. You know what? I'm going to do something else with my... I'm going to take it off. And if it doesn't come off, that means this wasn't the prepped side. So this would be the prep side. Ready? I'm going to use the flat black to base it first. And then I'll do a top coat of the gloss. So I'm going to go into the regular black. And I flipped it to see if this side was prepped. I don't really know. I mean, this is this seems like it's sucking right into it. So I think the other side was the prepped side. I think this was the prepped side. 
That doesn't seem like it's prepped. But see, that's opaque right away. The gloss is like a little sheer. Translucent. I love black, man. When it's on a piece, it's just that contrast. All right, so now we're going to do the stripes on the hat. But let's see. She has you shading all of the stripes first, like the golden straw stripes. She has you finishing the shading first. So let me, I'm going to do it this way, and then I'll, I'm just going to do at least one coat of the black. It's probably because when you're shading, you can get it on the other stripe, but we'll, we'll, I'll, let you, I'll figure it out with you. I'm just used to base coating the whole entire piece first. And see, this is what I don't like. The etching, my paint is kind of going down in the etched hole. And I don't know, it looks, it doesn't look as sharp to me. I don't like it. That's probably why she wants you to base coat. See, look, I, I totally just went on top of uh, the gold. Yeah, the etching is just throwing me, guys. Not a problem, it's fine. I'm just not sure what it does where I normally I'm a lot more sure of what's happening, you know? Um, maybe I should just follow her directions instead of going rogue. I could switch to a smaller brush too. Just, it would just make it a little easier to, so that I didn't go out of lines as easy. And like now I slowed down a ton because I'm trying not to go over that edge line. When you slow down, it's definitely going to work better. And then this bottom one. And I don't really know where it cuts off. Let's put the... Kind of like that. So I'll just... I think I'll go by the etching. Like the etching stops there. So I think that's where she wants us to stop painting. And because we're gluing the nose, like a, it'll be a more dimensional nose, I can get black on the on the nose, but I'm not. I'm trying to be neat. I haven't really been trying to be neat, to be honest. I've been rushing. But that's the thing. I think you're going to come away from this design successful, regardless. It's not an. It's not a complicated, difficult piece. It's just a quick and easy little cute whimsical you know very beginner really easy way for you to really dip your toe in the water and see what you think I'm telling I'm not a fan of the etching I just I don't know how to go up against that line it's bugging me but I will go with the flow I think it saves you having to trace everything. So that's a good thing. And so there's always good and bad to everything. And who am I to tell you what's better? It's just what I'm used to. Change. I like change. I don't mind it, but you know, it just takes getting used to. You have to practice new things. But it's starting to look decent, isn't it? It's starting to look like something. 
except for that little etching line. It's so frustrating. Usually my lines are so clean and neat and they're just kind of looking fuzzy, but it's a hat. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to add a coat of that, like, uh, you know what, the center of the B-Skep is black too. But I want to put a coat of that gloss enamel on top of this and see what it looks like. I just think it looks more showy. Yep. I like it. I like it. It looks pretty. Can you guys look at that? See? Anyhow, we let it dry. All right. Oops. I know. And I'm going to go back to the shading part. But see, that's a whole nother technique that I really didn't want to bombard you with until we were done the base coating. Because the base coating is just the same all the way through. He's already looking cute. Um, because the shading is done with a floating technique. And I really think... I want to do it um, in a whole nother video. I'm going to do the shading. So you're going to continue to base coat doing just how I showed you, following the directions. Um, the B step is the, I'm going to use like, I want to use like a darker. That's too close. I'm going to find a little bit of a darker color. Then do your flowers, three different color flowers, and like a light green for your um, leaves. And uh, I think probably the flower centers are the same color as Base coat, pink flower, yeah, I know. What's the center? The dot, the centers with titanium white? No, the centers look like they're the same color as this. So I would say, and I am going to get a smaller brush for this, definitely. I'm going to get like a number three round, because you can definitely base coat with a round brush. Just depends on what you're painting. Uh, this one, I want this one. I have too many brushes, you guys. Well, this is a number one round. It's very small. A number three would be my go-to. Oh, here we go. Here's the number. Oh, that's a number two. Let me grab the number two. And I'm just going to show you. You would do it the same way. Load the brush with water. Blot on your paper towel. Come over and pick up the paint the same way. Don't just go in with the tip and get your paint. You'd still just want to load it the same way so that all the bristles have paint. And then use the tip of the brush initially. But a, a round brush is so awesome because you can flatten it out. It does a lot. It's a, it's a great tool. Number three is the one I would recommend. Number three round. This is a number two and it I'm telling you, all brush, bleh, brush manufacturers aren't the same. It's so strange. Like, that flat I was using is, a num is considered a number 8. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty number 8. But then this is a number 8, the one that I... This is number 6 on it. I think that's a number 6 filbert, and it's huge. So... That's always been very confusing, and it's a lot easier to, for me to buy brushes in person. But that's starting to go away. You can't even find what you need in person. It stinks. Anywho, oh my gosh, it just starts coming together. I'm going to find a different um, color for that uh, b scap. I want it to be a little browner. Like, an, like a yellow-brown. Um... That goes up here on his hat. And then the bee's going to go here. His head is black. Did I do two colors of the yellow ochre? I'm pretty sure I did. I can do 
his little tail. Okay, I'm back. My camera died, so I didn't really know where I had left off with you guys. Basically, you got the idea. That's what's important. The idea is to get your pieces base coated. Um, and that being said, I think I did two to three thin coats on everything. All the, and then I did go around and do the edges as well. So that when it's, and then on the, and then I did do that uh, shinier on, the, and I might sand this because it looks a little uh, bumpy and I'll fix it. Um, the back probably got a little bit on it. Let me see my other gnome. Yeah, I had messes on the back. You're not really going to see the back, and because it's mine, I didn't. Now, if I were selling this, I would probably paint the back one solid color and then sign it. Always sign your work, you guys. I really hope you do that because it's so fun when you do a piece and then you come back to it years later and think, wow, I've really, my painting has grown. I'm, I'm you know, getting better. So, see, I went around the edges. And he's all base coated. I even put a little of the nose color on his nose. I don't know why. Just because I was watching, what was I watching? Something last night. And, you know, I'm not sure I love the etching, but for now, it is what it is. And we are going to continue. In the next video, I will do the finishing. The, the little, we're going to do some stenciling. I didn't get the stencils that she used specifically, but I have a similar one. Um, so let me put them back together. It's pretty cute. When you glue these on, which I'll do with you too, there is a way that it's going to fit and sit on the bot. It really matches up. She did such a good job. Like it goes like that, literally. The nose will go there. The B is so cute. And he's kind of hanging off. And then that. And then the feet and the stand. I'm going to paint the stand a, a color too. I don't know. Probably, I think I might do it this color. Although it would probably look more um, continual. Let's see. Yeah, she did it the same color as his outfit. All right, so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.